Okay, so welcome to Tech at Work online. So today we will be doing our human services Tech at Work um, discussion with Audrey. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, so let's dive right in. Tech at Work is a program that Vermont Works for Women does. It's a speaker series program with oops, with um, Burlington Tech Center, and we bring in gender diverse role models to show students at the Tech Center programs and um, that anyone can pursue these career fields and introduce them to people who are incredibly successful in their fields and are doing wonderful work in, here in Vermont in our community. Um, and so this Tech at Work online series is inspired by our partnership with Burlington Tech Center. Um, and so just for a little bit of background on who we are, Vermont Works for Women is a nonprofit in Winooski, Vermont, and we help women and gender non-performing individuals achieve economic independence in their life. And this takes a variety of forms for adults and youth, but for youth, we do um, a few programs like Career Exploration Days, summer camps, um, and programs like this, Tech at Work. Um, so now we're going to transition to uh, the presentation. Great, you can take it away. Um, you just want to introduce yourself first. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you again for having me for this series of presentations. My name is Adam Haji, and I'm the youth coordinator at the Spectrum Multicultural Youth Program, MYP for short. And um, I've been here in this position for about a little a year and a half. So, and it's been going great so far. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and how did you first choose this career? How did you get involved with the Multicultural Youth Program? Uh, I first started this career through connections in the Burlington community. Um, I went through the Burlington School District myself, graduated from BHS, and then um, took some time at college at Castleton University, and then came back to UVM in 2016 and just graduated last year. So um, I've known a couple of people that worked at Spectrum NYP, and I've participated in some of their programs that they had, such as the Multicultural Youth Program um, Conference and the, the Multicultural Youth Leadership Conference. That's what it's called, and it's a way for students to get involved in the community. Um, I actually have a slide um, right now that I would like to show you all. Um, about the multicultural youth program. Here are some pictures from the 2018 multicultural youth program. And this is just an opportunity for students to come together. And um, here's some more pictures. And as you can see, we, there's a lot of uh, students that identify as multicultural youth that come to this conference. And um, I did one of their workshops like a couple of times in the past. And here I am in one of the photos. So making those connections helped me to land the job that I have right now. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, that, that inspires me because of the passion I have for working with youth. Wonderful. Uh, and what do you love most about your job? Well, I talked a little bit about it, but I just connecting with people and um, creating those connections with students. I mostly do work in the Burlington School District as well as Winooski School District. Mm -hmm. I'm coordinator for the um, Winooski School District Help Desk, which is an initiative we have in BHS, the Winooski Schools in Essex, which allows students to come to a table either in the library or 
within the classrooms and we just help them with certain um, services like getting a job, applying to get your license or a driver's um, uh, permit. So I, I really um, love just being able to interact with students and as well as my team. Um, they're really amazing to work with. So those are the two things that I love about my job. Wonderful, thank you for sharing. Uh, it does sound like you have a great impact on the youth that you serve, so that's wonderful. Uh, what is the biggest challenge to your job? The biggest challenge to my job, um, there's several challenges, but uh, one of them is like being able to work with English language learners. Um, it's still very important for them to get the services that they need. Sometimes um, it could be difficult um, having conversations with them when we don't speak the same language. But um, the thing that I really admire is the resources that we have to provide interpretation services so those students can get the information and services they need. Even though it's a barrier, it could easily be solved with um, the resources and the connections that we have. So language shouldn't be a barrier when helping students out. And, um, yeah. And I think that's even more important now when everyone's at home and still needs all of those resources and help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Have you had any challenges now that we are all at home? Yeah, um, like one of the biggest challenge is not being able to see the youth uh, face to face, and uh, most of my work I do in the Burlington uh, schools and Winooska schools. So truly making that one-on-one um, -on -one mm -hmm. action with the youth face to face is uh, I feel like it's more impactful than um, doing virtual meetings. We're still keeping in connection with the youth through phones and um, online meetings, but. Uh, it's, it's just been a, a barrier, just not being able to fully see how they're feeling mm -hmm. and um, understand like what they're going through. But we're still checking up uh, on them through case management. I'm case managing for youth at the moment right now. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping in contact with them, just seeing how they're doing and how they're doing through this crisis with their family, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for that. Um, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? What does a typical day at work look like for you? On a, a typical day of work, it can consist of anything. So <laughs> most of the time I'm out in the community. I'm rarely in my office. Um, that's another part that I love about my job is making those connections outside the office, um, going to community, um, community organizations, and making partners with them, and as well as um, case managing youth and meeting them where they are at. And rather than having them come to you, it's um, one of the things that I love about um, our work. We understand how important it is to meet the youth where they are, and rather than rather than them having to come to us, you know, which makes a huge difference. And so a typical day really consists of me going to Burlington schools and connecting with youth via the help desk or just connecting them in different programs. Um, but for me, the, um, like a typical day consists of being outside my office, so creating those connections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so part of the Tech at Work program is to bring in gender diverse role models. So a lot of the work that we do is working in non-traditional career fields for whichever gender is non-traditional for that career field. So it can look a lot of different ways. Sometimes, um, like for example, for the construction field, women make up about three and a half percent of all the construction workers, so they are in a non-traditional career field, but for human services, often 
um, men and gender non-conforming individuals are more considered non-traditional. So has your gender ever posed any barrier or anything like that for you or you haven't found that to be the case? Uh, not to an extreme sense, but there's been moments where um, connecting with female youth has been hard mm. to make those connections, but um, getting into um, like helping to inform my female coworkers and let them know that I have a student who might benefit more from a female role model than um, a male role model, you know? Mm -hmm. And that goes the same for um, other teammates mm -hmm. uh, that are female that do have male youth and um, they might be having a connection, um, difficult connecting with them. So they will refer to um, male, our male teammates. So mm -hmm. we're always trying our best to um, identify those type of uh, complications mm -hmm. and intervene with them. Mm -hmm. um, our mission just um, implies that we're there for all youth, no matter what their background is, their identity. So whatever way that makes them feel comfortable, um, we're here for them, um, whatever role model. So mm -hmm. that's been my experience so far. And it's always a learning opportunity and um, nobody's perfect, but just learning and growing as we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, and just as a last question for you, do you have any advice that you'd offer to any students who are hoping to pursue a human services career field? Yeah, um, when I was in high school, I didn't know what I was gonna do or uh, what I was gonna do for, um, for my career field, or even what I was gonna do in college, you know? But I've always known to connect with people and do something that involves community involvement, which led to um, working in social services. Mm -hmm. I would um, advise young folks to be out in the community and doing community involvements through community service or just volunteering at a um, local community organization because um, the connections you make are going to be really important in the future especially um, if you're thinking of social social work or human development as a major in high school uh, starting those connections early is going to be really really important and um, everyone is has the capacity to make change so whatever your heart feels like um, or whatever you think your passion is i would just say go ahead and do it and no there's no um like there's no problem with reevaluating and um, coming up with a plan b so if you have a passion in mind, then just go ahead for it. Mm -hmm. Especially if you like collaborating with people and um, being social and just being active in your community. Um, I would say just uh, start at an early age so you can see how you, you really fit yourself into the social services field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be my advice. Mm -hmm. That's excellent advice. Uh, we've heard a lot of uh, like be passionate and pursue what you're passionate about. And so that's really excellent advice for any high schooler to think about. Mm -hmm. And it's really clear that you care and are so passionate about what you do. So thank you again for sharing with me and with all of the high schoolers who will be watching this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem at all.